hi everyone and fantastic to see you all again for another midweek video. I am blown away by all the people that have tagged their photos, hash 2020. And this week what I'm going to do is look at editing some of those and show you how you can do really simple edits that can make quite a big difference to the photo. So I've got around seven or eight photos that I, I chose and you guys have sent me the raw files, so I'm gonna have a look at those. First of all, I've just got this from Nikon, which is the Z50 Twin Lens Kit. And this is the top prize in the World Landscape Photography Competition. So if you haven't entered, it's only 10 pounds. A few people have asked what charities it's going to. One of them is UNICEF and how UNICEF are gonna help the children that are affected by COVID-19. But to have a chance of this, you need to enter and you've still got a few weeks to do it. So I'll just put that up there and let's just go straight into these images. The first one is this amazing sh woodland shot here from Tejas Coopers. I've probably pronounced that wrong. I'm really sorry. And it's already got a lot of atmosphere. It looks, it looks fantastic. So on this shot, I think there's a few things that we can do to sort of improve it a little bit. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into the develop module here. And I usually look over my presets. So I'll go through my presets and see which one I think works well for this. But in this case, I'm not gonna just apply a preset. Obviously, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and edit it from the beginning. So first of all, what I wanna do is I just want to just apply a vignette to it. So I'm gonna just do that with a radial filter. And all I'm gonna do is just darken the outside of it. I'm not gonna crop it at the moment, but what I am going to do is just remove this branch down here because I just don't think it quite, I think it's just a little bit distracting. Now I'm doing this really quick. You'd obviously spend more time than I'm doing on this. So once I've done that, I'm just going to have a little bit of play around with the exposure, the contrast and shadows. And I'm probably gonna do more of this with the S curve. So with the curve, I'm just gonna create a S curve which just increases the contrast. And I'm gonna flatten the blacks just by moving this up so the blacks aren't truly black. So that's a little bit better there. And the big thing I wanna do with this image is I actually want to mess about with the colors. So. I am just going to go to the hue here of the colors and I'm just going to play about with them a little bit until I feel that I've got something. So but basically what, what I want to do here is I want to make the earthy tones a little bit more earthy and I want to just pull out a little bit of the greens here as well. So that's all I'm going to do there and then I'm going to split tone it as well. So what I want to do is I want to bring out some of the warmth in the highlights. So uh, I'm going to just go here and probably just want to bring out some of the green colors in the highlights as well. So about there for the highlights and then the shadows, I just want to make them a little bit bluer. So maybe about there. So that just gives it a, a nice atmosphere to the image. I think that's that's looking a, a lot better now. The, the, the final thing and, and all, the only other thing I'm gonna do to this image is I'm just gonna crop it a little bit. So I'm just gonna crop a tiny bit off that side, tiny bit off that side and a tiny bit off the bottom. And I'm going to just tweak the white balance a little bit lower. I just want to cool it down a little bit. Once I've done that, I might go back to the highlights and just add a little bit more warmth in. And that's it, that's all I've done. So I've gone from that to that. So you can see that vignette had a big impact on it because it draws your eye into the middle of the scene. I quite like to do that with woodland scenes. It's also good if you have just a, um, a, a, a white area in the distance that you can see through to, it gives a, adds a bit of mystery to it. But uh, yeah, I think that looks really nice now. It's a fantastic image. Okay, on to the next one from Paul. So this is um, a, a sort of a Lakeland scene here. They've got this lake and this tree and some nice clouds. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this one is I'm just gonna go in and crop it. So I'm gonna crop it about there. I might crop it again afterwards. Um, I don't really mind these distractions at the bottom because I'm gonna tone those down a little bit. 
But what I want to do is, is darken the whole image first of all. So I'm just going to go in and darken the whole image. And I might brighten some areas up again, but I'm going to darken it. And you can see that this is really well exposed. Um, I've got all the detail in, in the, in the um, highlights here. So I'm not bothered about this blowing out at the moment. I'll deal with that in a minute. I am also going to do a grad on the sky. So I'm going to darken the sky even more. Add a grad, warm the sky up a little bit, and I'm going to just desaturate it a little bit, which is what I usually do. And just because I don't want to darken that tree anymore, I'm just going to go into a luminance mask here and just say, don't impact the dark tone, the really dark tones of this image, and that'll stop it darkening the top of that tree. So that is that. And then I want to just remove some of the green in this moss here, because I think it just distracts. It's not in keeping with the image. So the easiest way to do that is just, um, just go into the saturation of the green. I'm just going to drop that down a little bit, maybe of the yellow a little bit as well. And then what I want to do is bring back some of the light tones here. So what I want to do is just add a radial filter here. I'm obviously doing this really quickly, but I'm just going to add a radial filter, invert it, and then just increase the exposure here. Maybe just reduce the highlights a little bit. I might warm that up a tiny bit. And I'm going to reduce the clarity just to soften it off a little bit. So I've just created a little bit of a drama in there where you can see this bright area coming through. Now I've got to just sort out the bottom of the image because this is blown out here. So I'm just going to do a graduated filter there and I'm going to just reduce the highlights. And I'm also going to do a radial filter here. I'm going to darken this bit down. So I'm going to do quite a big one, invert it, and I'm just going to reduce the exposure of this bit here. Just to, just to soften that, I'm going to probably, I want to keep the contrast there. So I've added some whites back in, but I've, I've reduced the exposure. And that, isn't far off. I think now I just want to play with the color balance. So I'll probably just tone it down a little bit. And then finally, the final thing, I'm just going to add a, a vignette on it. So I'm just going to add a further vignette on, on it all just to create a little bit more drama. And that's it. So my before and after, that's before, that's after. Just really simple edits can make a really big difference. Okay, onto the next one. Um, which is an image from Robin from Germany. And actually, um, Robin just sent me an email. When he sent me this photo, he sent me an email with a really amazing blog on his area of Germany, which is called Saxon Switzerland. Don't know why it's called that, but it's in Germany. Um, but I'll, I'll put a link below to his blog, because go and have a look at it. He's got some amazing images there, but it also it's a location in Germany I'd never heard of, and it looks spectacular. So I definitely recommend going and having a look at that below. Um, but this is one of Robin's images. Again, this is unedited. It's perfectly exposed. It's not um, blowing out where it shouldn't be blowing out. I'm not bothered about the sun there. And this is a good example of where just a subtle bit of editing can make a really big difference. Now, if I go into this, you can see that if I just increase the whole exposure, then there is detail in the rock, um, but I don't want to open up too much of that detail. So what I do is I just mess about with the exposure to see what I want to do. And then I'll put that back. And then all I'm gonna do is put a graduated filter on that. Again, I don't want it to affect any of the highlights. So I'm just gonna drop that down. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the exposure and contrast and whites. And all I wanna do is I wanna pull out some of the detail in the lighter areas of the rock. I'm not too bothered. I want the shadows to stay dark because the sun's over there. The shadows are going to be dark. And if I open up the shadows too much, it's going to look really odd. So I'm not going to mess with the shadows at all. All I'm wanting to do is just pull out some of the detail there. I'm going to cool it down a little bit. I might come back to that though. And then the, the other thing on this is the sun is just a bit too like a spot. So what I want to do there and I've talked about this in, in this video here about using a radial filter. I think it was one of the first um, five in five videos I did, but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do quite a big radial filter and then I might do a smaller one. I'm gonna increase the exposure and I'm gonna increase the color temperature. 
I'm going to reduce the highlights a little bit. So what I want to do, I might just increase the feather a little bit. What I want to do is I just want to soften that out. Now the way to do that is just reducing the clarity. And when you reduce the clarity, you get that softness um, to this. Now I may also add a bit more saturation in that as well. Maybe a little bit more warmth. And then I'm going to add another one, another radial filter here, a bit closer to the middle. Um, and then in this one, I'm going to do it even more. Just invert it. I just want to soften that out. And on this one, I'm going to color it a little bit. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to, and I can just reduce the dehaze as well. I want to create a really soft glow from this sun. That's much better. So what I've done there is I've gone from this quite harsh ball of a sun to a much softer glow. It looks, it looks much nicer. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a graduated filter. I'm going to make sure I don't affect the tree. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. And I'm just going to reduce the exposure now of the sky a tiny bit and maybe warm it up and then maybe also increase the saturation a little bit. That is looking pretty good. So what I've done is I've gone from that to that. Now Robin did a probably better job than me on it, so he's already edited this. So go and take his, his, a look at his images below the fantastic. Right, on to the next one. So this is a quick one. Um, I'm going to just apply one of my presets to this one just to show you because this is a good example of the shot that I take quite a lot and just to show you how if you have some presets it can make a really big difference. Now I always say you should make your own presets but if you haven't got time to do that and you should have time because we're all in lockdown then you can get my presets down below um, and there's a discount code for, for them. But what, what I do is I just go through them and think okay which one's going to look good for this and then I'll edit based on that then maybe I'll start with this one called Helm Crag. So this is one that just brings out some of the brown tones and, and softens the um, greens in the image. And I'm gonna crop it a little bit. It's a lovely image, this. I really, really like it. So simple of this tree just going across. Diagonals look really good when there's lots of verticals. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a radial filter in the middle and I'm just going to reduce the exposure of, of the outside just to draw your attention into the middle a little bit. And then I'm also going to just reduce the clarity a little bit and probably just increase the exposure of the whole image and then reduce the color temperature. What I want to do on this is add some highlight toning and I'm going to do that some orange highlight toning. So I'm just going to add some orange highlight toning to bring out a little bit more of those brown colors. But I want the, the shadows to still be blue. So I'm just going to drop in some blue toning on the shadows. And that's not far off. I think I could probably on the video. This is a fantastic image. This one here. Exposure a little um, bit more. So the previous increase the feather. Yeah, so this image back from James is just a lovely, yeah, and that's, lovely that's really image. nice. So it's subtle, um, but it's made a big difference. So let's have a look so at I've how gone we can from edit it. That to that. And on, on the same note, using that radial filter, and again, I do this a lot, and that's why I'm showing it on a few a few images, because it's something that I do a lot in my photography. Okay, onto this image here, which is from Christopher. Um, and to be honest, you could do nothing to this image and it'd still be great. Now, it's interesting because he, Christopher had sent me three images because he'd done a, a stack of it. This is just one of them. And he, he'd rightly taken three images because it's quite a big contrast range between the highlights of the sun and the shadows of the reeds. But if you look at the histogram up here, you can see that I've got everything in. Um, I'm not blowing anything out. And because I'm not going to be pulling up the detail in the shadows too much, otherwise it'll look really odd, I think we probably don't need to do a HDR on this. We don't need to stack the images. We can just work with this one image. And all I want to do is just do a radial filter in the middle and again, just soften that sun a little bit. So it's going to be a simple case of just adding a radial filter there, um, making sure it's just affecting the middle area. And then just I'm just going to increase the exposure, increase the temperature, warm it up a little bit, reduce the highlights, and I'm going to just color it a little bit as well. 
and all I want to do, and then by just adding, reducing the clarity here, I can just soften it all, which looks really, really nice. All I'm trying to do is just draw your eye to the sun a little bit more, making that more attention. So the only other thing that I need to do on this is probably just darken the sky down. So again, I'm just emphasizing that sunset. So just a quick case of darkening the sky down. Um, I don't even think this needs much of a crop, but if anything, I probably just crop it in from there like that. And this is just such a beautiful image, but sometimes you, you, you feel like you have to over edit images, but this is one that doesn't need that. And finally, I just want to go through these two images. Um, now I'm not going to edit these images because the, the I, I chose them because I felt that they, they, they had really good edits all, already. So the first one's this one, which is a fantastic um, image that was taken with a black and white um, thought in mind. The reason I know that is that Ian's profile, all his photos that he takes on there are all black and white images. So he's gone and taken this image knowing that he's going to convert it into black and white. And I think that's something you, you should really think about. When you're taking an image, you shouldn't go back and then just try it in black and white. You should go out with the intention of taking a black and white image and then you'll end up with a much stronger shot. So this image is great because it's got uh, a blue sky which goes really dark and, and contrasts really well with the white fluffy clouds. We've got strong texture in the grasses and we've got strong leading lines with this fence going down in, into the into the distance. So it just works really well as a black and white image and quite often when you shoot images in harsh sunlight and you get harsh shadows they don't look great as colour images but as black and white images they can look really good. You know just take Sean Tucker for example and the street photography he does he uses that shadow and light to create those really strong shapes which then create really strong black and white images because it's shapes and texture and light and tones that you want to work with in black and white. So I wanted to show you that one. I also wanted to show you this shot here by David is, is fantastic and it's a really good example of something that was just edited so well. Um, you know, he's captured this shot and, and rather than keeping the sky in the top of the image, he's cropped that out so your eyes are not distracted but that creates a really strong image and he's got a fantastic strong line through this image as well from the bottom left through following the river through to the um, amazing waterfall in the distance. I've been blown away by the shots that you guys have sent in. So keep doing it um, and make sure you enter World Landscape Photographer. Uh, we've got a few weeks left before, before we sit down and start judging the photos. And I'll definitely be doing some videos on our judging process as well. So, you know, even if you don't win a prize, you might appear in one of those videos. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks ever so much for watching. Keep adding your photos to hash 2020 ND. I'll keep doing videos using those photos in the midweek. And um, I'm now going to concentrate on Sunday's video, which is going to be a belter of a video. I'm so, so excited about it. So until then, bye.